gave the address of the people on the table of law here tonight to my immediate right is the council solicitor who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left are the council planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer who will present the applications this evening and give any technical, technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see that are down on both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and meet the decision. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition, signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner has not addressed the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may speak um, on behalf of the residents. However, once the ward councillor has returned to the public gallery, they may not return to take part in any debate that may be followed by the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee, who will then make a decision on this application. If a site visit has been requested, then we will be discussing that this evening, as I've pointed it out to you. So if we can um, just to site 
have some existing landscaping and additional landscaping proposals will come forward as part of reserve matter simplification. The external appearance of the new dwelling is also reserved for subsequent approval, but careful design and use of materials will ensure the new dwelling will relate well to the character of the wider area. The plot is large enough to accommodate a new single storey um, dwelling that would not appear cramped or overdeveloped, and the proposals are recommended for approval. There is a by a 
terrace community area, which is a finished level between 1.52 metres above ground and within six metres of the proposed reinforced application. The application proposes a rear garden enclosure within five to six metres from the new ground which is don't have 10 metres of usual norm. The report sees mitigation and sufficiency standards by highlighting that the great door bound is sufficient space and immediately stated that the same fiscal rules benefiting the planting's initial privacy and use of the space. What it does not detail is that the building's proposed that should have adequate rear and garden areas to suit the siting of the building. In this case, the line on this major road frontage. That is good. I misunderstood. Sorry, if you didn't say that, I obviously didn't have to stick through to the Well, with due respect, sir, this is a very complicated.
exchange route in the original uh, running through from Westfield, the old village contains a lot of very special old buildings, some of which are listed. Um, some time ago, I understand Diamond Street was considered as, as a con to be made a conservation area, but uh, didn't meet all the criteria. And sadly, that means so many of these other that buildings and sites remain unprotected. Um, also, as you to the access and the traffic. Um, you may have noticed while you were there the number of parked cars in Diamond Street. That is not unusual at all. And we were there mid-morning, but at school times, I can tell you, uh, with the crossing just by the junction and the further crossings uh, in the West Kirby Centre itself, so the traffic completely backs up, um, very often halfway back up the hill. Um, so anything that adds anything, any problem to the traffic Reference has also been made to um, the site opposite um, the long front garden of a house called Homebury, um, raised up uh, in banks behind very high sandstone walls, a very prominent site. Um, outline planning permission was obtained on that site for a dormer bungalow, uh, but um, <coughs> based on this became in, in detailed application a very large detached house, almost filling the site. Although this has been offered a justification for developing this application site, I don't think it's a very good example. And also, I understand that uh, complaints are being made over the way that application is handled. Uh, this application, therefore, is on the opposite corner plot, uh, on another front yard, uh, in front of a very fine old house. And reference has been made to the importance of that, setting that garden to the house, which has no rear, rear space at all. Sure, home was on the front boundary of the side boundary of Diamond Street was felled, but also political um, unhappiness about that. Of course, not protected, and those who went on the site that really saw the size of the stump, it was a very large tree indeed. Replacement plant, planting is, of course, relative, but it will be many, many years before it makes any difference. Um, on the site, the separation distances were pointed out to the front elevation. 21 metres we were told. But that apparently ignores the recently obtained, well, uh, we were told that ignored the recently added orange tree, which I assume is much counter to the habit of the room. But, as we've heard, there's a more recent planning application being granted, and it is referred to on page 72 of the report, application 1630235, approved in April this year. Uh, and that is for a two story front extension projected further into the garden than the origin already does. Um, some of these rooms must be habitable rooms, I'm certain, and we do have windows facing down the garden. Uh, no measurements are given on the plan that you can view online, but it appears to me that not only does less than the 21 metre separation distance remain, but most likely less than the 40 metre separation distance, there is to know that if there is a proper measure for this. Uh, and that obviously would be quite both buildings if this permission was to be built. Um, on this basis, I would believe that policy HS4 uh, would be contravened, and this application should therefore be reviewed and allow the applicants to proceed with their extension. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I open this up to the Matthew, would you give that to Thank you. It's really huge. Uh, um, so members who attended the site visit on Tuesday will have noticed two things. Firstly, that um, Stone High, which is the existing house property, sits um, quite significantly higher than the application site, which, which sits at a lower level. Um, and there also is a, um, a boundary stone wall that runs along the um, front of the site um, with, with steps that go up to, to Stone High. So this is the orangery, which members will have seen on the site. And as Councillor um, Watt made reference to in, in his presentation, permission was granted in this, uh, earlier this year for an extension to the front of, of Stone High. It's important to say that whilst that is a material consideration, that, um, that uh, permission has not been implemented, so the, the extension is, is not there at present. However, um, we did consider the, um, the extension, and, and the way that it works is that 
two-story. Um, the lower ground floor is, is subterranean. Um, so the windows, which, which roughly would be here, are already um, significantly screened from the wall that, that members would have seen on site. So there wouldn't be any loss of immunity to, um, to windows, as I say, which are already partially screened from the existing wall. Um, there's decking that would sit on top of that, and then um, the extension would sit um, um, here, uh, roughly around the orange tree. But as I say, uh, that, that, that extension has not been implemented and may not be implemented, but of course it just remain extant at present. That said, however, even if this building, even if the extension built and this um, uh, was given permission. External appearance of the, um, of, the, of the dwelling is reserved for subsequent approval. So there are design measures that can be um, put in place that would secure both the, uh, the outlook from the new dwelling and that of the, uh, the host dwelling at Stone High. And that may be, that principal outlook is from the front of the building uh, to the side of the building and the non habitable room windows are placed in the back, um, or indeed that that, window is, uh, that that elevation is left blank. So there are design uh, measures that can be employed at, at, uh, at the external appearance um, stage, which means that we're satisfied that outlook for both Stone Hive and the proposed dwelling can be comfortably achieved. It's important just to, to clarify that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to uh, Councillor Watt and Mr. Fitzgerald and the, and the African's agent. I, I've read the report twice now and I, I've heard what Matthews has said in terms of the, the permission granted in April uh, for Stone High hasn't yet been uh, implemented. I'm not clear uh, from the report in terms of the distance from the uh, extension, if it is implemented, to the property as proposed. Can you confirm what the distance is between the two? Um, so as I said, it, it will come out of the front here and um, from, from where it will project, roughly in this location, from there to the back of the, back of, of, the um, of the proposed dwelling, it would be 14 metres. So if this was a blank elevation, or the windows along that boundary were not habitable, that 14 metres would satisfy our guidelines for separation of distances. The windows on the subterranean level, as I said, are already um, uh, partially screened or partially blocked. Their outlook is blocked because there's a, because the, uh, of the boundary wall that's already in place, and those windows are, are about two meters away from that boundary wall. Um, but as I said, the, the outlook from those, from those windows is already uh, blocked by the presence of the existing stone wall. So, just to be clear, when you say they're two meters away from the boundary wall, I'm talking two meters from the wall of the proposed property, or two meters from the boundary of the property of the 
was, as I was um, outlining, so this is the extent of the extension. So there, is, there are windows here, uh, but they would be 14 metres from the, um, the back of the proposed property. So as I said, if that had a, a blank elevation or non habitable rooms, that distance would be satisfactory. These are the windows that you can see at the subterranean level. But because of the presence of the wall, the majority of those windows are already screened, so the distance from that wall
16 and 18 were got close. Can just, uh, 15, sorry, uh, and 18 were got close. You can just see the outline of those two bungalows uh, to the bottom uh, left corner of the site here. The proposed dwellings are L shaped in plan and from the front would be read as bungalows, but two story dwellings from the rear. Plot two is smaller in footprint to plots one and three. Um, in order to reduce the potential impacts on numbers um, 16 and 15, uh, 15 and 18 when we're up close. The rear elevations of all three properties have been left blank at first floor and both first and ground floor levels are gables closest to a book close. Therefore, standard separation distances are achieved having in regards to the relationship of the proposed dwellings and existing adjacent properties. The bedroom windows on the ground floors at each dwelling and the living room windows face onto the blank elevations of the adjacent plot. And so the windows here and face onto the blank. So blank elevation plot three, blank elevation plot two, blank elevation plot one. So the bedroom, as I say, the bedroom windows on the ground floors of each dwelling and the living room windows face onto those blank elevations of the adjacent plot. And the distance is achieved on 12 meters, which is a shortfall of two meters from the full two meters you should sort. However, having regards to the fact that this is a new development and no existing amenity will be compromised, and taking account of diminished weight being applied by inspectors that appeal to separation distances, this shortfall is considered to be acceptable. Parking is provided with each dwelling together with private amenity space. The previously refused scheme featured a fourth dwelling at the top of the site, which would have required the removal of several more trees. That unit has now been deleted from the scheme. Um, which results in no development at the top of the site. The proposals are considered to be acceptable and recommended for approval. There is a qualified petition of objection. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. Would the lead position like to come
established tree results from which a final loss of the potential for building. The council felt that the existing character and appearance of the area, semi rural location, and part of an area of land which provides a visual break between two areas of residential development. Nothing was Just changed. How long is that? How long is that? Well, nothing has changed.